Welcome to the Wounds of the Faithful podcast, brought to you by DSW Ministries. Your host is singer, songwriter, speaker, and domestic violence advocate, Diana Winkler. She is passionate about helping survivors in the church heal from domestic violence and abuse and trauma. This podcast is not a substitute for professional counseling or qualified medical help. Now, here is Diana. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hope you're doing well this week. We have a bonus episode for you. In addition to our regular Wednesday episodes, we have Juanita McDonald on the show today. She has an event coming up on April 9th that she wanted you to know about so you can get involved and participate. And uh, I invited her to come on to the show to tell you about herself, her ministry, and this event that she's putting on. So let me tell you a little bit about her. Juanita McDonald is the executive director of Rediscover Me, which means mental elevation, women's initiative. She holds an honorary doctorate degree in humanitarian arts a master's degree in change leadership, and minor in human behavior. Registered as a victim service provider for the state of South Carolina and certified as a girl circle facilitator through the Department of Social Services. Now, Juanita created Rediscover Me after going through a period of personal loss and reestablishment. During that time, she began to accomplish her own personal goals, and she quickly realized that the extent that women lose their identity by conforming to titles placed upon them by others or situations, which hinders her from fully developing. Therefore, her services Center on Domestic Violence, Trauma, and Mental Health Advocacy for Women. So that's some of which what we do here in my ministry. So we're going to hear about her, her story, and the event, which is called a Pantython. And it's not what you think. It's not anything scandalous. <laughs> So please come on in, get a cup of your favorite beverage, sit a while and get to know Juanita and learn about this fundraiser that we're putting on. So here's my conversation with Juanita McDonald. All right, please welcome Juanita McDonald to the show. Thank you so much for coming today. Diana, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Well, we're going to find out what a, a pantython is. I was really intrigued when April introduced me to you <laughs> about this event. Uh, but before we get to that, we want to know a little bit more about you and what you do. So start off with you know, where you're from and tell us about your family and maybe something that you do for fun. <laughs> Okay, Diane, I live in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, here, I have an organization called Rediscover Me Women Initiative. Uh, it is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we work with um, individuals that are affected by abuse, trauma, and mental health uh, to engage, educate, and inspire change for which a woman or teen girl survivor of domestic violence and sexual assault can rediscover the me she strives to be. And, um, we do it based on the three pillars of lost identity plus lost self-esteem equals lost purpose and direction. And so in the midst of supporting those survivors, um, we built a, a pretty, you know, interesting company, um, I am the mother of five grown children, a uh, grandmother of nine children, uh, and have a, a twin niece and nephew that are very rambunctious that I love <laughs> a lot. And so what do I do for fun? 
I love the outdoors. That's one of the things, mm. the parts of the outdoors that I can, where I can see my feet. Let's be, let's be strategic on this. Uh, <laughs> and so um, I love to go out into nature. I generally start my day with a three mile walk to our lake and, and back before uh, getting started uh, working with clients. Actually, my, my morning walk with my exercise, as well as uh, after working with clients, that's how I bring it back down, ground mm. myself, uh, get out into God's, I call it his majestic uh, creations. I love to go out and hear the sounds. And uh, it's something about that fresh air that revitalizes me. And so um, that's about it. The well, I love nature as well. It just rained here in Arizona. It doesn't rain very often. We we dance in the streets and, you know, stop work and go out the windows and, and look at the rain coming down or, or go out. And it smells different when it rains here. You smell the crisote bush. Yeah, I like to go outside too. I have a garden and I have a bird feeder. Yeah, during the pandemic, I took up bird watching. Is that crazy? Because <laughs> we look just watch them from our, our kitchen mm -hmm. window. Mm -hmm. And they're so funny. <laughs> There's a gentleman on our on my trail. And that's what he does. He comes out, starts his day bird watching. Yeah, so. I go out there and, and tend to my garden. And I'm I'm the same way. I like to go out there and see things growing and and see all nature out there and Arizona's beautiful don't we don't do camping the last time we went camping was a nightmare it just wasn't very enjoyable so we don't do the outdoor camping anymore <laughs> but, but we like to take walks and stuff too <laughs> mm -hmm. yes I love my walks yeah so we're going to get into a little bit about your your personal story you've experienced some personal trauma in your life that led you to start your ministry and your work. Could you share with us a little bit about that, whatever you're comfortable with? Sure. Um, you see, and I'm laughing because you said um, you got into your ministry. No, Diana, I was pushed. Ooh. My ministry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> um I my background is um finance. Uh I was a loan originator um in the mortgage industry until the crash and it forced me to go back, return back to school and um in the midst of it uh I just kept, as I began to discover things about myself, I truly kept hearing the word rediscover me rediscover me. And um, I never, you know, and it was something I ran from and never really wanted to do. Uh, but my organization is my mother's. That's why I say I was pushed, oh, not knowing. <laughs> well, no, um, what I mean is my mother was was uh, a domestic violence, uh, sexual assault survivor. And um, she, dis she died in 2000. And so, um, Growing up, my the trauma that it was inflicted was secondhand trauma. Growing up in an abusive home um, and dealing with a mom that was, you know, was supporting and loving a mom that um, was dealing with the psychological effect of trauma, not getting the help, the help, the support that women didn't have back in her day, mm -hmm. right? So, um, that didn't tell me, uh, that's why I said, I, you know, when I look at everything that pertains to rediscover me, my mother was the type of woman in the community who supported everybody, even though she needed the help. Mm. And so um, as I began to hear rediscover me and uh, was, it was and started dealing with it, several classmates kept coming up to me as they heard my story, as I wrote out assignments and I talked about um, different things, aspects of my life. And, and so women would come up to me and start asking me questions and would talk about difficulties. And, and I'm sitting up here just baffled that, you know, educated women were dealing with that much trauma and difficulty. So um, I was concerned that I might give everyone the wrong information. So I began to, uh, you know, 
I, I kept praying and talking to God. Well, really, God and I was battling it out. And so uh, I, I eventually gave in, uh, started taking more psychology classes, um, my background. And then, um, the, and so that's the birth of this company. Uh, and so uh, through it all, I've worked with an uh, enormous amount of people. I want to say a little over since 2016, about a little over 400 Um women and families, community leaders, organizations, church, uh, churches, um, bringing awareness and, and resources to them as it pertains to domestic violence and sexual assault from a mental perspective. Mm. It is so important. It, it's so needed. And we are kind of kindred sisters here. We do some of the same things with abuse survivors. I wanted to dive in a little bit into, can you go into how you met the Lord Jesus in a personal way? That would go all the way back to my childhood. Um, I remember, I, I grew up in the church, sung on the, sun, uh, I was on the Sunbeam Choir. Um, I was... Um, our church on my family land, uh, Spring Hill Missionary Baptist. And so, you know, I was a little choir girl. And so, and um, I remember the first time, you know, first of all, our church is on my family land. And I remember the first time my uncles created the, the little baptism pool. And I went and got baptized without my mother's permission. Wow. I forgot about that, but I got baptized without my mother's permission. And, um, and it was, you know, and the baptism pool was outside. It was in the I just remember the sun. And, um, and when, um, I was baptized at that time, for some reason, remember the tent, tent revivals? We don't oh, have yes. those anymore. Yeah. We don't have those anymore. I remember going to a tent revival before being baptized and everybody was shouting and, and I was shouting, but I, I didn't know why I was shouting. They were shouting and I'm shouting, but I didn't know why I was shouting. But, uh, but eventually afterwards, I wound up getting baptized. And, um, but I've always, um, I've always had a love for God and um, believe. Um, even as I shared with you about the trauma my mother went through, no matter where she was in that, she would always set me and my siblings down and she would give us Bible study. Oh. And so that showed a form to me that showed a form of family unity and the degree of why we, you know, I also need to pour into my children. And so it, it sort of built and, um, and has been my saving grace throughout all these years. So she was definitely a, a godly woman and and, and loved Jesus and raised her family that way. Mm -hmm. And she's probably looking down from heaven and proud of you and what you've done for the Lord and helping other people. Yes, uh, I, I often ask when I'm thinking of her, you know, I was like, I, I hope you're proud of me and I hope you're um, doing things in a manner that you would, uh, uh, you know, and, and this being like an extended reach of what she tried to do the whole entire time of our childhood. Mm. Diana, I have to, to share with you, um, my mother wasn't, I'll say, what we project the imagery of that, you know, good Christian home. Uh, in our home, there was, my mother was an alcoholic. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mother was an alcoholic. You know, it's not a, a, a one of those things. It's like, oh, what was me? It's just what I know now that I didn't know then is when someone is traumatized. So for her being raped and molested, which I didn't find out about until after her death. You know, so only thing I remember, and this may be a little deep, so I'm going to put a sensor on it for your viewing audience. If anyone is triggered, if anyone, uh, I want you to be, you know, be cautious about listening to this. Um, if you've been through any form of domestic violence or sexual assault, so I want you to be a little, um, and we'll try to make this as sensitive as possible. But, you know, I want to put that part out first. Thank you. Um, 
uh, for my mother, she was, you know, I, she, I never knew about her childhood because my grandmother, after remarrying, moved on her family, all the family members except for my mother, to another state. I don't know the whole story. My mother stayed with our grandparents, my great grandparents, and was raised on our family farm. And growing up, I only heard my mother say two things. One was, I just want to be loved. Two, I was all I was the only girl on a farm of men. Mm. So I never knew what that meant growing up. It wasn't until, like I said, um, as she was dealing with cancer, lung cancer, and it forced me to slow down. And even as I slowed down and heard her story, it was still the same, same her whole entire life. But, um, you know, and so when I began to learn more about domestic violence, and when I began to learn more, taking more psychology classes and understanding the body, especially the brain and how it reacts to trauma, mm -hmm. you know, and all the things that kept coming out was things that I began to identify my mother was my mother dealt with. So I started asking questions in the family. Mm. And a lot of them couldn't read well, what they didn't tell me. But I had I had to take bits and pieces of information and kind of merge it together. And um, the outcome wasn't good. You know, it, I really felt sad for what my mother went through. And then I began, I then I went back and I prayed and I asked God to forgive me. And I asked her to forgive me as her child because I did not know. Uh, what that meant she did not know mm -mm. what she was going through she only thing she knew to do was to you know just like any person that is a survivor and dealing with any form of mental uh desperations you know they're just trying to stop the pain they're mm -hmm. trying to stop the images that are coming in their brain they're trying to cope with everyday life yeah along with remembering what happened to them and so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so from for her, you, she was something that was very taboo, a single woman raising four children. And in the midst of her brokenness, she supported just about everybody she came in contact with in our community. It, no matter what they were dealing with, how they were dealing with it, she was there. She was like that social worker that we have now. And, and I, as a child, even in that, in that, a mind, my, that mindset, I couldn't quite grasp the concept of, we don't have anything, but you out here helping everybody else. Yeah. You know, I couldn't quite grasp that, but she would always tell me, Susie, and that's my nickname. And she'd say, you don't know how you might be entertaining an angel. You need to be careful. Mm. And I learned that a very valuable lesson one Christmas day, um, I began to, you know, we doing like we always do. She would, she would negotiate with so many people, the farmers, everybody, and she would get all of this food. And my mother was an amazing cook. And so she would just cook all of this food. And this one particular Christmas, we stayed up all night long and you name it, it, we had it in our little shack of a house. And I was so mad and I was so tired and I was so angry at the fact that I had to help be the one because I'm the oldest to help her prepare all of this food. Mm -hmm. And when I say my, uh, my mother went off on me because she was just, I was being that, you know, com just complaining, complaining, complaining. And, um, and she just kept talking to me and so she got angry at me and she just pulled me to the side and she said made the statement that I just shared with you and and she said you you need to watch your mouth because you don't know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and so it wasn't until Christmas day um that I um as I, as people came and it was like seemed like the whole neighborhood came to our little bitty house and they were just going out and they're taking food and they're doing this and I'm mad, I'm like this here <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like well they got husbands and they got this and they got that and we struggling and my mouth was just going yeah. going going and so and and uh but uh somewhere in the midst of all of that and me being uh in the corner pouting 
I happened to overhear someone thank her for doing what she do, she was doing because they would not have had food for Christmas. And I felt like, it felt like somebody had hit me in the guts and I was like, Aww. yeah. So um, that's why I wanted to kind of give you that little enlightenment. She's, um, I think she's amazing, you know? I think my mother's amazing and she's a phenomenal woman. And I love sharing this story and I love sharing how all the things that she's done and because of her, I am. And so those lessons, no matter how they had to come, has helped to build me as well as an amazing organization. She sounds like such a giving person and unselfish. She is. She is. And, you know, people look down on somebody with, you know, alcoholism. Like they're lesser of a person, but you pointed out something very important. Some something that most people don't realize is you use alcohol to dull the pain, mm -hmm. so you don't remember those horrible things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make Absolutely. them a pat a bad person. It's that's how they they deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. I used something different for my pain. You know, you can use work, you can use sex or drugs or all these different things and it's for the same reason I, I, I appreciate you sharing that story about your mom and and being vulnerable with us My now, pleasure. In, in your ministry do you have any stories or favorite folks that you've seen their lives change dramatically or god's done something marvelous in in their life that you could share all of them. Actually. All of them. All right. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. I I brag on the fact that um, Rediscover Me has like a 98% um, success rate. Uh, I even vet through all of the, cl the, the clients that we're going to take over uh, to make certain that they are prepared and ready to do the work because as you already know, it's hard uh, dealing and, and remembering um, if you know, and so to and what that means and teaching them how to go about things. So, um, but I've had some very difficult cases, but the most interesting case was the one that warranted me being in the doctoral program uh, for Christian psychology. Um, I did not know that um, Archbishop was putting me up under the microscope with a case study. And so um, this particular case study uh, was sent to me to work with. And um, the, big, the first thing that we look to do is to dive deep into trying to uh, understand the, um, the root cause of what is dealing with, what, it, what is the root cause of the surface level issue. And so uh, after working with her for about close to a month, it finally, and me trying to map her out, it finally mapped out to the fact that her form of lost identity centered on uh, her birth certificate being changed by her mother mm. in order to get her in, in, in a school that was designed for overachievers. So basically, the, her mind had to develop and grow quickly in order. So basically her mind, mentally, she was older than what she physically was. And so uh, that entailed her to having, uh, she couldn't quite fit. She didn't have a, she didn't fit inside of anything or, or with anything in anyone. And, she, and, and so there was this mental blockage that, that was creating massive issues. So uh, she had a lot of other area, area that we had to deal with. But once we got to the root cause of it and looking at that identity factor, um, then we were able to work backwards mm -hmm. and address all the other things that she was facing. So uh, it was a very tough time. Uh, it, it required a lot of praying. <laughs> yes. 
and it had me on pins and needles uh, for a long time. But um, at the end, I did not know January 11th is, um, you know, I was invited January 11th, uh, 2019 is when I was um, presented with it. And she was my case study. And I did not know it. <laughs> wow. I love that story. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it just amazing when god just gives you these little surprises and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely sure does yeah amen i appreciate you sharing that with us so let's get down to the business here what in the world is a pantheon <laughs> oh wow <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> it's not what we think right Sorry. Yes, no, 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 no. Uh, it is a sass panty thon, and we it's a play on words. It's a play on words, but uh, the realness of it is a, a fundraiser for sexual assault survivors. So, SAS stands for sexual assault survivors. Um, this is our second year um, put, uh, establishing this. Um, it came about due to me hearing about a survivor after being raped, having to uh, go to the hospital, have a rape kit done. Mm. And um, in the midst of that, at the end of the rape kit being completed, um, they had to take everything, you know, everything from her. And uh, the only item they were able to give her to walk out of the hospital was a pair of scrubs and underwear that were two sizes too big. So as she walked out of the hospital, she felt re-victimized. And oh. so, yeah. And so as I, and so, you know, I did my research and that's when I started doing my research, I, that's when I discovered that um, the degree of hospitals needing these resources and um, organizations here in South Carolina that provides these resources, you know, they, their supplies run out real fast. Mm -hmm. And so we would not have ever thought about panties, you know, and so um, after talking, you know, so after talking to the committee, the first year we put, we decide to run with it. We do, we do a five hour panty thon on April 9th. This year is April 9th. Last year, I think it fell on April 9th also, or 10th. But we do a five-hour pantathon where we bring resources, entertainment, um, advocates. We bring a whole lot of activities similar to Jerry's Kids, and we have something going on for five hours. Wow. And yeah, so in the midst of all of that, you know, we're bringing awareness, uh, we're talking, and we're also still bringing in resources. So we generally start in January and work our way down. And so I chose that because I needed something that wouldn't require me to do a whole lot of work, unless you're behind like I am to get now. <laughs> and so, you know, but uh, that wouldn't require me to do a whole lot of work, but would bring great value. And so that's that was the one uh, that we did. I didn't think it would be as successful, but it was, we raised up to 5,000, a little over 5,000 dollars in resources last year. Uh, so we were able to split those resources with three organizations, mm -hmm. Sister Care, Sexual Trauma Services of the Midlands, and Hush No More. So we took everything, broke it down by funding, and then divided it. And um, one organization, we discovered that they normally have everything but panties. And last year was the first time that they received panties for their sexual assault survivors. And we were the ones that were able to do it. And so we're thankful for those that are able to provide those resources to us. Um, those resources really run very, very thin. So um, in the things that we collect, we are asking everyone to please donate. Uh, even if you're not here in South Carolina, because we're working with individuals that are nationwide, um, it can they can send funds. Those funds will be divided. We are a nonprofit 501c3. So anything that is given is a tax write-off. And so um, we can it it can be sent through uh, our cash app, which is hashtag rediscover me. Mm -hmm. Hashtag rediscover me. Or it can be sent through our a check or money order can be sent through um, the our mailing address, and that will be rediscover me. 
um, if they will be endorsed to Rediscover Me Women Initiative or Rediscover Me. And um, the address of it is 7001 St. Andrews Road, PMB Paul Mary Bob, PMB 413, Columbia, South Carolina, 29212. Um, those items can be mailed or if you just have it and you want to buy the items and ship it or do an Amazon drop, that's fine too. Um, you know, whatever the, the thing is, how do we, you know, our, what I'm challenging everyone is to show up. And our theme for this year is she showed up. Yes. Show up for survivors. She showed up. And it's not gender related because he can show up too. Yes. And so he can show up too and, and support sexual assault survivors. Yeah, I do have your flyer. I'm, I'm definitely going to put it in the video and on social media. And the in the show notes is going to have all the information. I mean, this is something simple that everybody can do. I mean, how much is... A packet of panties, if you go to Walmart, is you can probably get, you know, I get a package of 10 for, yeah. what, 10 bucks. Yeah. You know, at yeah. Walmart. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so send in a $10 gift card. That goes a long way. And you think. It does. Something so small, like clean panties that fit. I mean, we all went through the lockdowns and the toilet paper thing. You didn't realize how much you really need toilet paper until you yes. can't go to the store and buy any. Uh, yes, absolutely. We don't, we, things we take for granted, right? <laughs> Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about uh, that we didn't go over that, about yourself or your ministry or the event that? that we didn't talk about? I want to encourage individuals that are in a abusive situation because we work with domestic violence and sexual assault. If you are dealing with anything that may cause, be causing some type of harm, some form of harm come to you or you're in a bad situation, I want to challenge you to reach out for help. Um, you can either, if you feel comfortable with talking with me, I would be that support person to help you to get the help that you need. Um, if not, you can definitely call um, the domestic violence hotline and contact them. They're also 277-277. Is, that's a text line that you can also apply. So there are amazing resources that are available uh, to help you walk out this. But the biggest thing is um, be brave enough to get the support that you need. Tell somebody. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody. And you mentioned the, the rape kit. And that's, I've never been through that personally, but it's terrifying mm -hmm. to be all mm -hmm. alone and poked and prodded by doctors and emergency personnel and to have somebody to talk to and say it's 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 going to be okay we're going to get you cleaned yes. up get you some proper counseling and support get you somebody that understands and help you to heal mhm mm you know that's what Jesus would do absolutely amen amen and i'm going to have all of the information in the show notes anything else you'd like to say before we we sign One, off. Just Diana, thank you so much for DSW Ministry and having uh, Rediscover Me Women Initiative a part of your program. We truly honor you and thank you for this opportunity. And I thank you so much for coming on to the show. And you, know, you are a blessing. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor. You as well, beautiful, and have an amazing evening. Okay, this this was an exciting bonus episode. Isn't she awesome? I'm going to share the flyer with those that are on YouTube. So I'll be putting this on social media. The event is April 9th. That's 2022. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and that's Eastern Standard Time. It is virtual and 
she showed up and it has the address where to mail the checks and the money order to and it tells you what they need looks like in addition to panties you can send money for cleaning supplies personal hygiene items donation gift cards cash app is that you can use to send money it is dollar sign rediscover me so you can see that on there so participate get in there and be involved if you're listening to this and it's past the event be sure to contact Juanita and see how you can support her ministry if you need resources or help she said that she's available to help anybody that has sexual trauma sexual assault so i will be listening to the event on april 9th myself i will most likely be working but i'm going to be listening to the event as it's going on virtually so i hope that you are there as well and listening to the entertainment and the speakers that are there and all the other goings on help her to raise the funds. Thanks for tuning in and listening to this. And we will see you next time on Wednesday during our normal podcast episode. We will see you then. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Wounds of the Faithful podcast. If this episode has been helpful to you, please hit the subscribe button and tell a friend. You can connect with us at dswministries.org, where you'll find our blog along with our Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube channel links. Hope to see you next week.